trustees of the Land Ends Trust, distinguished representatives of ACOBA and the Land Ends School in Chitral, fellow Jasonians, ladies and gentlemen. It is my privilege on behalf of the old students of Mr. Langdens to say a few words about Langy, as we affectionately called him in our school days. He lived for just over a century. As Principal Thompson reminded us on his 100th birthday, Mr. Langdens did live through momentous times, the end of World War I, the rise and fall of communism in Russia, World War II and the and celebrate his devotion and commitment to Eastern College and to education in Pakistan. We, his students, were most fortunate to have him as our teacher in school and as, as, as a friend in later life. I know that some of his students who are present here considered him to be a second father and granted him the respect and privileges due to a parent. January 1954 is a memorable date for me. I was admitted to M2 at Edison College. There were 17 of us in the class. I entered the classroom and was told that the first period was to be taken by one major Langdon's, who had also just joined the school from the army. He was to teach us English and was also to be our class master. I mention English because he's generally remembered as a mathematics teacher, because I found him to be an extraordinarily good English teacher. He taught us Shakespeare's Julius Caesar, <coughs> Thor Heyerdahl's Pontiki, and A Tale of Two Cities by Charles Dickens. We students of his recall the characters, the plot, the details of each of these great works very vividly to this day. It was his art of teaching that made us understand not only what went on in the minds of Charles Darnay, Sidney Carton, or Madame Defarge, but we understood the makeup make of relatively minor dickensy of characters like Mr. Jarvis Laurie, Dr. Burnett, and Ms. Cross. It was after a few months in class in 1954 that we began to realize that our friends in Kelly House had started to outstrip us in mathematics. Mr. Langdon was the housemaster at Kelly, and he would assist the boys with their maths in prep time. Mathematics teaching continued to be his first love. His other major contributions in our time was to take the weekly hobby class of photography. He taught us how to take photographs the use of filters and the difficult art of developing and printing photographs in the dark room. He was from the beginning an avid listener of the BBC, General Rossi's service in those days, the World Service now, and whether in Rasbad or Chitral, he kept himself to the end abreast of international news. Mr. Langdon was known in school for his meticulous sartorial turnout, his caucus spaniel, silly and messy, his vintage two-seater car on which he drove Mr. and Mrs. Fredman to Savar. How did three persons fit into the car we asked? I was at the wheel, Mrs. Fredman next to me, and Mr. Fredman at the back pointing to the mother-in-law seat in the dicky of the British car. <laughs> then there was his famous ride in an old two-seater aeroplane from the hall to London. I forget, but I think that the plane made about two dozen stops on the way before crash landing in a village just outside London. His mountaineering trips to Kagan and the northern areas were legendary, and I recall a memorable trip with him to Cuda in 1955 when he took the entire C1 class there by train. He was never harsh to any student, but he always earned their full respect. Whether in the classroom or on a trek in the mountains, there was perfect discipline among his students. And I must confess that his English class is one I always look forward to. He made teaching fun, and that was one of his finest attributes. I think it was in 2004 that he telephoned me from Chitral. He wanted me to accompany Sir Adil Mulk and himself for a call on President Musharraf. 
They wanted a grant for the Chitral School. I had left General Musharraf's government in 2002. When we walked into the president's office in Toby Park, the general asked me, Muin Saab, what are you doing here? I recalled my words. I said, I was among Mr. Langdon's original students at HSM. Mr. Langdon is worried that if the school he has developed in Chitral dies with him, he will feel that 60 years for the cause of education in Pakistan would have been wasted. And although I am not directly connected to the Chitral school, I have come with him to plead for a noble cause. Musharraf, President Musharraf gave the school the money we wanted and also presented a signed copy of his autobiography to the major. It was as a result of that meeting that Mr. Langdon's was invited to the lunch hosted by Prime Minister Shokat Aziz for the visiting Prime Minister Tony Blair. Mr. Langdon would probably recall later that he sat at the lunch between two Prime Ministers and managed successfully to persuade the British authorities to revive his pension as an old soldier of the British Army. <laughs> There's much to remember when one speaks of Mr. Langdon's. I could go on with remembrances of the last 64 years. But Principal Thompson has given me a time restriction, and I'm speaking at the funeral of a man who was fastidious about punctuality. It was in the year 2000 that Mr. Langdon had come down from Chitral and was staying at my house in the minister's enclave in Islamabad. He was sprightly 83 but was beginning to show some signs of old age. I asked him what his plans were once he decided to retire from the school at Chitral. Would he like to go home to England and return to his family? <coughs> his clear blue eyes looked hard at me and said, Pakistan is my home and my students are my family. I want to live and die here. <clears throat> I was then a member of the governing body at Jason. I proposed at the next meeting of the Board of Governors that on his retirement, the school would provide accommodation and some services to Mr. Dangdens. Shamim Khan and Saeed Babadabi would <coughs> may recall that the resolution was passed unanimously. As things turned out, the school management provided more than was expected. With the added generosity of some trustees and other old boys, many of whom are present here today, the Langdon's rooms outside which we stand were for refurbished and arrangements made for the major to be comfortable in his retirement. <coughs> Mr. Langdon's services at Ibsen, Rasmus, Chitral do not need recounting. They were enormous in quantity and quality. When he was retiring from Ibsen, as headmaster of the prep school, he had been offered a lucrative job by Mrs. Kasuri, who was then starting out with an ambitious plan for the Beacon House school system. Mr. Langdon had accepted that offer, but then came the government's offer for him to found the Cadet College at Rasmar. He decided to go for Rasmar. On that occasion, he told me that Mr. Kasuri was a Mrs. Kasuri was astonished that he was giving up the lucrative job in the hall for a poorly paid one in the wife of the day's son. Mr. Langdon looked at me with blue eyes and said, with a twinkle in, in the eyes, Mrs. Kasuri could not understand the challenge and adventure of going to a place like Rasta. This remark, I think, illustrated his philosophy of life. I would like to conclude <clears throat> with some selected quotes from Kennison's following Ulysses, which we read in C1 and Mr. Langdon's pupils. Ulysses has returned to Sparta, he is old and is addressing his soldiers with a captured head on an adventurous journey back from Troy. Quote, I cannot rest from travel. All times I have enjoyed greatly, both with those that love me and alone. Much have I seen and known cities of men and manners, climates, councils, governments. Now he addresses his soldiers directly. Be hearts, be foreheads, you and I are old. <coughs> old age has yet his honor and his toil. Death closes all, but something near the end, some work of noble note may yet be done. We are not now that strength which in old days moved earth and heaven, that which we are, we are. 
one equal temper of heroic hearts, made weak by time and fate, but strong in will to strive, to seek, to find, and not to yield. Tennyson's Ulysses, to my mind, sums up Mr. Langdon's spirit and character very well. It also shows why in old age he committed himself so totally, first to Razmak and then to Chitral. When, in 1998, at the age of 56, I opted to take early retirement from government service, he rebuked me and observed, there is no age to retire. I am 81 and have no intention of retiring. Mr. Langdon made many friends during his 71 years in Pakistan. One such friend was John Wall, an American who served for over 10 years with the World Bank in Pakistan, retiring as a resident director in Islamabad. He sent me the following message from Washington on hearing of the major's death. I knew, uh, quote, I knew, liked, and respected Major Langdon greatly. I will always cherish the image of Mr. Langdon's intrepidly and quietly trekking the Karakurams, which he seemed to love. And I will always remember the respect he inspired in you and your classmates. His passing marks, for me at least, the end of the British Raj in India. Before concluding, I would like to mention those who served Mr. Langdon both at Rasma and here in his old age, Mr. Sher Heather Khan, Director of Studies in Chitral, Mr. Razi Rahman Sufi, the cook in Chitral, and then Mr. Raman Jalil, who was PA, Secretary, personal carer for him in Chitral and for some time here in the Langdon School. And then at Edison, in his last days, <coughs> Major Dr. Aftar Raman, the college doctor, with the nursing assistants, Mr. Robes, Mr. Shakur, Mr. Fazal Rabani, and then his personal carers, who are also here today, Vaseem Masi and Javed Anwar. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, for your patience, and thank you, Mr. Principal, for the appropriate arrangements you and your colleagues have made to mark this important occasion. Thank you also for inviting me to speak on behalf of Mr. Lang and students. خدای واحد خدا با بیٹے روح القدس کے نام سے امین ٹوڈے وی گیدر ٹو ریمبر دا لائف اینڈ کنٹریبیوشن آف میجر جیفری ڈگلس لینگلینڈ سولجر ٹیچر جینٹل مین ہیومینیٹیرین مونٹینئر بٹ موسٹ آف آل بلوڈ سرونٹ آف دی گریٹ بریٹن and Pakistan. Maybe you all stand for the gospel reading. <clears throat> Let's all stand for the gospel reading. Jesus said to his disciples, Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, <coughs> there ye may be also. And whither I go, ye, ye know, and the way you know. Thomas said unto the Lord, <clears throat> We know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. This is the gospel of Christ. Thanks. Praise be to you, O Christ. Please be seated. It's a very solemn occasion this morning. A service of burial for Major Langham, 
I believe there are many realities in life. We all acknowledge that they are realities, but when they come to pass, sometimes it's very hard to accept them. And death is one of the realities. Whenever a child is born, everybody says there will be one day that he or she is going to die. But when the death comes, we have lots of questions. And we ask God why this has happened and why you allow it to happen. Prophet David says in Psalm 90 that man is like a grass. Man is like a flower. It comes, blossoms, and then goes away. And God has ordained, restricted the ages of everyone. The psalmist says 70 years or 80 years in reality. And I believe after 80 we're all living on the world. But we know the reality. But the only difference is how do we look at death? It is not the fear of death. It is the fear how we are going to face after the death. And this morning the word of God encourages us. Jesus said, let not your heart be troubled. And we as Christians, our faith, that we do not believe only the life here on earth, but there is a life after that. Death is not the end. It is the beginning of another journey. The human soul and things finishes here, but there is another way up. Jesus died on the cross, buried, and new life came. And this morning, I want to encourage each one of us. We want to thank for the life of Major, for dedication. But we are not disappointed because we know Jesus rose from the dead. And with him, we have a hope. And that's a living hope, which is not based on assumption, but based on a personality, which is Jesus. And the word of God encourages us. And I'm sure when we depart from this place, how do we want to be remembered? The things we have done and the things we have not done. And I believe many people who live here as students, as their colleagues, the things which they have learned to give him tribute is follow those things and do the things and that light will go. Light, education is light and darkness removing from there. So my prayer is that may God give peace to their beloved family and to this extended family. And we will not be bogged down by that. But we thank God this is the way to go to heaven, be with God. Thank God that he is the only who is everlasting, not human beings. And at this time, I want to give special thanks to the principal, to the vice principal, to the bursar, to the security head, and all other who have done this wonderful job for looking after him in God's pain. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The peace of God that passeth all understanding. Keep your heart and mind in the love and knowledge of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst us, be with this brief family, and for all of us, in Jesus' name. Amen.
The last journey of Major Lang Lang going through the school, going towards the mosque, and then all the three houses of where he was also a house master. I'm covering this on Facebook so that 
students of this all over the world can okay. have some idea of what. I'm covering life okay. yeah. so that Asha, people Asha. all over the world will be able to take Do I think? So, everyone, here you see the whole college paying tribute to this great man. They're all lined up for their winter turbans. We are now proceeding towards the principal's house and then. On to Pipple Avenue, 
where he will then proceed to the graveyard on jail road. To live jail there? Ah. Now we are passing through the principal's residence. Yeah. On to the people's avenue. Not the people, people the people. people. Yes. Mr. Langdon is like two hours walk. Yes, yes, sir. <laughs> At his pace, yes. At his trekking pace. Yes.
इसके लिए पीठी भी करेंगे नहीं सर बट सर हैं बट सर के साथ
<laughs> Not inside. I am making sure that it's a Sonians all over the world. See the whole ceremony. Live, live, live. Ah, live. Sir, you can stop. Okay. 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 And so, a great journey comes to an end. Louis. ये ले है लड़के ये ले हां ले आए सर प्रवेश प्रवेश खान प्रवेश सर आ गया भैया सर आपके तरफ कौन आ रहा है एक मिनट जी सर जो है ना वो इस तरफ आएगा आ जाओ प्रवेश तरफ आएगा सर इस तरफ आएगा सर हमारी तरफ आना है ले आ रहे हैं जी सर उस तरफ पर पर लाख तो पेंट कर रहा है सर आते हैं एक और है Men that is born of women have but a short time to live and is full of misery. He cometh up and is cut down like a flower. He fleeth as it were a shadow and never continues in one state. In the midst of life we are in death. Of whom may we seek our succor, but of Thee, O Lord, who of our sins are justly displeased. Yet, O Lord God, most holy, O Lord most mighty, O holy and most merciful Saviour, deliver us not into the bitter pains of eternal death. Thou knowest, Lord, the secret of our hearts. Shut not Thy merciful ears to our prayers, but spare us, Lord most holy. O God, most mighty, O holy and merciful Saviour, Thou most worthy, judge eternal, suffer us not as our last hour, for any pains of death to fall into Thee. Jesus said, All that the Father giveth me shall come to me, and him that cometh to me I will no wise cast out. And this is the Father's will which Thou hast sent me, that of all which he has given me, I should lose nothing, but should raise it up against in the last day. We entrust into thy hands, most merciful Father, the soul of this, our dear brother, Major Retired Langen. 
we commit his body to the ground, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust, in sure and certain hope of the resurrection of eternal God through our Lord Jesus Christ, who shall fashion anew the body of our new low estate, that it may be like unto this glorious body, according to the mighty working whereby he is able to subdue all things unto him. Amen. I heard a voice from heaven <coughs> saying unto me, Right from henceforth, blessed are the dead which die in the Lord. Even so saith the Spirit, but they rest for their labors. Almighty God, with whom do live the spirits of them that depart hence in the Lord, and with whom the souls of the faithful are in joy and felicity, we praise and magnify thy holy name for all thy servants who have finished their course and kept the faith, and committing our brothers to thy gracious keeping. We pray that we with him and with all those who are departed in the true faith of the holy name may have our perfect consummation and bliss both in body and soul in thy eternal and everlasting glory through jesus christ our lord amen, amen. let us join together by saying our father, father who art, art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and, and forgive, forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, 